Attempt on a record also being a race between two men. So often the world record challenger is out alone having dropped the two pacemakers. But in this case we have a real race on our hands. Isham El Garouj was born on September 14, 1974, in the industrious city of Burkhan on Morocco's northern coast. When he was young, he told his parents, My dream is to become an athlete. My dream is to represent my country. My dream is to mount the podium at the Olympics. El Garouj would have to wait a few years before he had this opportunity, but during his youthful development, he never lost track of his goals. At the young age of 16, after years of training in Burkhan, El Garouj moved to the city of Rabat to train under Abdelkader Kata, Morocco's national running coach. Kata himself was also a very accomplished runner. He was the 10,000 meter national champion in 1981, as well as the 5,000 meter national champion in 1984. In addition to his running background, Kata was also a student of distance running. He graduated from the Royal Sports Institute in Rabat, where he authored the paper, Considerations of Middle Distance Running and How to Optimize Preparation. Kata also had a book published about his training methods in 2008 titled, Moroccan Success, The Kata Way. Over the next few years, distance running guru Kata would guide El Garouj in his world-class form. But even Kata noticed something unique about El Garouj. He said, I noticed his tenacity and courage, and I could see limitless potential. Talent alone isn't enough. You need to have the right character as a runner. I knew this boy would go far. In his first international appearance, Hisham El Garouj, just 17 years of age, appeared at the World Junior Cross Country Championships in Boston, Massachusetts. His first race would indeed prove to be a challenge, as the conditions were cold, windy, and snowy. El Garouj placed 14th in this race, finishing the 7.8 kilometer distance in 24 minutes, 26 seconds. Later that year in September, El Garouj, just six days after turning 18, had his first international triumph by placing third in the 5,000 meters at the World Junior Track and Field Championships in Seoul, North Korea. In this race, El Garouj finished the 5,000 meters in 13 minutes and 46 seconds, only finishing behind the great Haile Gaber Selassie of Ethiopia and Ismail Karoui of Kenya. The 1993 started off in a similar fashion to the 1992 season. On March 28, 1993, El Garouz represented Morocco at the World Junior Cross Country Championships at Amorabieta, Spain. In contrast to the previous year, the conditions were warm and sunny, offering a faster time to all the participants. In this race, El Garouz placed 15th overall, exactly one position worse than the previous year. El Garouj's time of 21 minutes, 28 seconds, over the 7.15 kilometer course put him in an average pace of 4.49 per mile. This performance was yet another solid performance for El Garouj, but it was not the performance he was looking for. After these championships, El Garouj was riddled by injuries and would not compete again until 1994. It should also be noted that that same year, Nuruddin Morsali of Algeria, one of El Garouj's future rivals, breaks the mile world record by running a 344.39, a race El Garouj was very likely watching. In 1994, El Garouj would become a well-known name throughout the distance running world. 
at the IAAF World Relay Championships, an event which spanned from 1992 through 1998, El Garouge, who was only 20 years old at the time, was instrumental in Morocco's success, running a 13.43 on his 5,000 meter leg. Later that same year, El Garouge would make his 1,500 meter debut. In his debut, he would run a 3 minute and 33 second 1,500 meters. That year he would also debut in the mile by running a 353.71 in Oslo. Two very impressive debuts. By 1995, El Garouge was now a well-known runner on the international scene and he had emerged as the main contender against Morsali at the Outdoor World Championships. Earlier that year, at the World Indoor Championships, a race where Morsali did not compete, El Garouge brought home his first world gold medal by winning the World Indoor 1500 meters. This indoor victory led to a showdown at the Outdoor World Championships. Although he was progressing, El Garouge still was no match for Morsali's strength and speed. Although El Garouge was unable to take down Nuruddin Morsali this year, he continued to lower his personal bests in the mile and the 1500 meters. His 1500 meter personal best in 1995 was a 331.16 and his 1995 personal best in the mile was a 348.69. Moving into his first Olympic year as a world-class runner, El Garouge had his sights set on the 1500 meters in Atlanta. At just 21 years of age, El Garouge, while expected to medal, was untested on the Olympic stage. While most are familiar with the El Garouge Morsali battle at the 1996 Olympics, fewer are aware that that same year, at the 1996 Grand Prix Finals, Morsali and El Garouge faced off again. With a lap to go, El Garouge found himself tucked right behind Nuruddin Morsali in striking position. With the memories of Atlanta in his past, El Garouge set his sights on the moment, ready to overcome this new challenge. With 100 meters to go, El Garouge overtakes Morsali, and this victory would spark a winning streak few would ever match. It wasn't until El Garouge's win over Morsali in 1996 that the world would realize that El Garouge was the new king of the mile, but as time went by, it became more and more apparent that Garouge was king. At both the indoor and outdoor world championships in 1997, El Garouge would bring home the gold. During this year, El Garouge would also break the indoor 1500 meter world record by running a 331.18, and additionally, he would break the indoor mile by running a 348.45 which still stands today. In this clip here, you can see El Garouge is simply too strong and too fast for Morsali, and the last 200 meters is all El Garouge. It's important to note that since El Garouge's fall in Atlanta in 1996, he became as close to unbeatable as a runner could be. His speed combined with his strength made him a true adversary against any competitor and even a flawless race from a rival seemed to not be enough. This fall, this singular event, not only gave him a higher purpose for racing, but it gave him a deep, deep sense of desire to chase after eternal glory. Though unfortunate in the moment, this fall likely turned El Garouge into a more mature and wholesome athlete. Moving into 1997, 
El Grouge also began to see more media attention. People wanted to know how the fastest smiler in the world trained. While the exact details of El Garouge's training is still somewhat of a mystery, many outlines of his training are available, and they are very telling of his overall fitness at the time. El Garouge would train every day, twice a day, with one session in the morning and one session in the afternoon. El Garouge also had an emphasis on quality over quantity, focusing more on speed and maintaining solid form through his runs. This training regimen seems somewhat typical for a world-class caliber athlete, but let's take a deeper dive and discover exactly what the fastest miler in the world was doing at the time. El Garouge's training was broken up into three separate cycles. One, preparation one, two, preparation two, and three, racing time. Preparation one typically involved aerobic endurance in the morning and either strength work or power work in the evening. First, let's focus on his aerobic endurance. One of his typical runs would be anywhere from 30 minutes to 60 minutes, averaging three minutes to three minutes and 10 seconds per kilometer. Additionally, he would do two separate workouts, either 4 by 2,000 meters at 5 minutes and 10 seconds, or 6 by 1,000 at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And while El Garouge wasn't running, he was likely doing strength training. This strength training included half squats, full squats, lunges, 300 to 400 reps of his back, and 300 to 400 reps of abdominals. Now on to preparation phase 2. In the mornings, El Garouge would do aerobic endurance, and in the afternoons, he would either do strength work or race pace preparation. His aerobic endurance for preparation two was almost identical to preparation one, except this time it was slightly faster at 250 to 3 minutes per kilometer. For El Garouge's race pace preparation, he included a myriad of workouts. One being a fart lick starting at 6 minutes, then going down to 5, 4, 3, and 2, averaging 225 to 235 per kilometer and also reps of 1600, 12, 8, 6, 4, ranging from 220 to 225 per kilometer. This also included a recovery starting at 1 minute, going all the way down to 30 seconds. Now on to phase 3, racing time. In the mornings he would do warm-ups, and in the evenings he would do either speed work or race pace preparation. Incorporating warm-ups into his training was important because he would be increasing his speed drastically in his workouts. These warm-ups included 30 minutes of easy running and 30 minutes of general exercises in order to activate the body. Cycle 3 speed work typically included two different workouts. One, 10 by 300 in 35 to 36 seconds with help from a rabbit, and two, 6 by 500 meters in 64 to 65 seconds, again with the help from a rabbit. And last but not least on El Garouge's training cycle was his race pace workouts. This included a 10 by 400 meter workout at 53 to 54 seconds with only 30 seconds recovery. This, amazingly, is his race pace, 53 to 54 seconds. One more important aspect of El Garouge's training was his altitude training. For about three weeks during each training cycle, El Garouge and his team would travel to Ifran, Morocco, where they would run at an altitude of around 1,660 meters. This area is also a well-established area for distance runners, with multiple oval tracks, miles and miles of soft surface trails, and long hilly roads for surface workouts. El Garouge entered the 1998 season as the undisputed greatest miler in the world. He was the reigning 1500 indoor and outdoor world champion, and he still hadn't been beat since he overtook Morsali in the Grand Prix Finals in 1996 after Atlanta. With nothing to prove but running a world record, El Garouge set his eyes on the 1500 meter and mile world records. On July 14, 1998, El Garouge set his eyes on the 1500 meter world record, which stood at 327.37 by Nuruddin Morsali. For the previous three years, Morsali's 1500 meter mark had been untested, but on this day, El Garouge would make his mark on the 1500. This world
world record simply shattered Morsali's world record. In fact, this is the first time any human had run under 327 for the 1500, and it was the only time a person had averaged under 55 seconds per lap for the 1500 meters. This record still stands today. El Garouge now holding the world record in the 1500 meters, there was now one clear goal in mind, breaking the world record in the mile. In similar fashion to the previous year, El Garouge would put his body to the test while at a meet in Rome, Italy on July 7, 1999. This race would aim to hit 400 meters in 55 seconds while passing through 800 meters in around 1 minute and 51 seconds. The vast majority of the other competitors simply could not keep pace from the very beginning, but Noah Nini of Kenya stuck right behind El Garouge. So often it comes to pass that a world record attempt is done in isolation. This reality makes it only that much more difficult for a world record to be broken. But in this case, both El Garouge and Nini pushed each other to their absolute edge. With a lap to go, the world record appears to be within reach. In order to break the world record, El Garouge and Nini will have to run their final lap in 56.47 seconds, a feat both men are more than capable of doing. With 100 meters to go, Nini attempts to pull up next to El Garouge, but the king of the mile is simply too strong. El Garouge, he's closing! Watch the time! The world record, 344.39! El Garouge needed to run a final lap of 56.47 in order to break Morsali's world record. He ran it in 55.22. This world record, along with his 1500 meter world record, has now stood for over 19 years. <laughs>